our natural gas can be used to create so many different products, so many products that we learned all too well during the COVID pandemic that our supply chains became too taxed in certain instances, but those products were coming in from outside of this region, outside of this country. And what we want to take away from this conversation today is to question why aren't we doing more to bring those opportunities here to the United States, especially to Pennsylvania. I also do want to shout out to a group uh, that we've worked with, John and myself, uh, quite a bit, and that's labor. You touched on it, John. The labor guys are, are great to work with. Bill, I really appreciate everybody being here. I really thank Cabot very much. Keith Smith, I uh, appreciate you. And John Augustine as well, as so, uh, so many on the call. Uh, I appreciate it. But now uh, we, need to, uh, we, we need to open up our, 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 uh, our economy, but we also have to appreciate that we need to do it uh, by creating healthy and safe uh, working environments. Uh, we, we can't be resistive to that, uh, frankly. Uh, we cannot go backwards. We cannot shut down again. From the very beginning of the pandemic, manufacturers have really been leading the country through the COVID-19 response. And the rest of the country is depending on our industry to be leading the recovery and the renewal that we hope to achieve. It was getting the guidance that our members needed from the CDC and other agencies and to be able to share best practices so that manufacturers knew what was needed to keep operations going and to keep their workforce safe. Making sure state and local governments didn't shut down essential manufacturing operations because of vaguely worded orders. From the onset, we understood the ability of manufacturers of all sizes to be able to ramp up and convert their production to fill the needs for essential supplies or be part of that supply chain that was needed for that production. We forcefully made the case that all manufacturing was essential because we knew what was possible when manufacturers could step up to the call and respond to the call. We were focused on mobilizing production of PPE. That's now an acronym that more Americans are familiar with, but is not an unfamiliar acronym for manufacturers. We connected manufacturers that had PPE or could produce PPE with officials at FEMA, the White House, and other agencies as well as the Wolf Administration through the Department of Community and Economic Development so that they could get that material to where it needed to go most. The bright spot has been the vast majority of manufacturers, 98.7%, were able to continue or only just temporarily halt their operations since the start of the pandemic. The almost 22% of manufacturers retooling to produce PPE, 67% re-engineering their processes to reflect COVID-19 safety protocols, and about 12% completely reevaluating the mission of their firms. We're seeing a true renewal in manufacturing that was spurred on by this pandemic. But another big part of our American Renewal Action Plan has been on onshoring and strengthening the supply chain right here in America. We can't disrupt the over our global supply chains that provide manufacturers in the United States the vital components of products that we can't find anywhere else and could potentially disrupt our recovery efforts. So we've launched a nationwide campaign to be able to highlight that message. And we've made it available, Bill, by uh, being able to text RENEW to 52886. And by texting RENEW to 52886, you can see specific details on our onshoring proposals, see some of the, the, uh, the campaign-related materials that we've been able to employ across the country. We are very fortunate, as the Congress mentioned, to be within three quarters of the U.S. population within that one day's drive that a trucker can do. And I found out what, that we're also within half the Canadian population. So, um, you know, we can reach Canada, we can reach the majority of the U.S., and that's what makes Pennsylvania why we're the Keystone State. We started to see that change and move to some higher skills, more robotics, uh, more technology, and frankly, better wages. What we've started to see, uh, the only problem with e-commerce uh, and uh, warehousing is typically they don't use a ton of natural resources, right? It's um, conveyor belts, it's not heavy on the manufacturing side. And so um, I think that gives us that, that leg up as I talked about competition. But we have challenges, you know, uh, the failure of House Bill 1100 was very disappointing. When we look to our neighbors to the, uh, the West and the South that are putting incentives on the board uh, for companies, if we don't 
reinvent quickly. If we don't onshore quickly, then we have nobody to blame but, but ourselves because we have every tool and resource at our disposal to do it. And again, Pennsylvania has more um, than others. We got, we got hardworking people, whether you're blue collar or white collar, whether you're a trade, um, we have all those assets that a company will look for. And I really think after this virus, we have the ability to be you know, a lot stronger and that comes with manufacturing. If you think that it's a good idea where 76% of medicine is made outside of your country, uh, that's a bad idea. Um, when the majority of your products that you need, tariffs or not, that's a bad idea. And I would rather, you know, frankly, pay a little bit more and have that product here and have my neighbors working than be relying on others. Where my office is in Pittston, right across the street, is a company um, that came from Europe. They employ 300, uh, employ 300 people. Um, they just attracted one of their uh, suppliers, bringing another 150. We've had food companies looking at our area. We're a hot spot for food. That's not something that you really want to outsource, sometimes things tend to spoil. Um, so, you know, making that here, we've always been strong on plastics, um, metal fabrication. I, I think we're poised and, um, you know, ready to go. And the fact that we can have affordable, reliable, and responsible natural gas puts us way up on that list for manufacturing. I just Monday uh, introduced a, uh, a bill, which is um, establishing something called the Infrastructure Bank of America. That's the private sector capitalized, fully privately uh, owned and managed approach that, not to get into the details, but could, could add as much as 300, 400, 500 billion dollars a year in private skin in the game as far as, um, as, far as uh, for uh, development of infrastructure. Uh, and basically public-private partnerships. Before the pandemic, the need to make bold investments in our nation's infrastructure, not just roads and bridges, but our energy infrastructure, has been one of those unique opportunities where we've been able to see the business community and the labor community really come together to, to approach this in a very nonpartisan way. And strengthening our nation's infrastructure it should be something that should be done in a bipartisan way. You know, pre-pandemic, we saw the need, but you know, looking at where many of the state and local budget shortfalls are, it'll be critically important for uh, the congressman and others to be able to get that surface transportation reauthorization done. Durability and flexibility of manufacturers uh, this year was really put in, in center stage and how manufacturers can adapt their production lines and, and how they can adjust to be able to incorporate and integrate within various larger manufacturer supply chains. We created a, a free portal for companies to be able to go in, seek out needs that they have in the form of PPE, not just masks, but gloves, goggles, face shields, make that free and accessible to be able to connect them with suppliers that um, can be able to meet those needs. That's something that we hope will um, create greater interest in that marketplace that can help connect small and mid-sized manufacturers, be able to highlight what their capabilities are and to be able to, um, to, to find partners throughout the supply chain that they can connect into better. We host annually uh, that delegation that I mentioned that are throughout the world um, working for uh, the state DCD. We host them here in Northeastern Pennsylvania and we tour them to local businesses like the Congress mentioned. We also uh, partner with them to have manufacturing days where they can pitch their products um, to those supply chains that, uh, that you're talking about. One of the things that's always been frustrating in Pennsylvania um, is that we talk about more taxes, more taxes, more taxes, whether it's on the gas industry or anything else. That's not how you grow an economy. You grow an economy by growing businesses that pay taxes. So you don't tax an industry, you tax multiple businesses that all share together those things that we would like to enjoy. Unions and the associations that got behind this, um, it's a no brainer. We need, I can't create those tools to offer a company. Shell would not be here in my opinion without those incentives or it would have been really difficult with those incentives. And all school funding for traditional schools has been more or less completely made available for the vocational schools as well. 
I have a number of vocational schools throughout my district and they're all terrific. I've, I've visited every, every one. Um, and I'll tell you what, you got young people in there that have a bounce in their step that are doing something that are doing carpentry or doing plumbing or doing uh, welding and they're going to come out and they know there's going to be uh, jobs available for them. We need to um, uh, continue to advance that. We have great trade schools. We have 19 colleges and universities here in Northeastern Pennsylvania that graduate over 40,000 students every year. Outside of places like Philly or Pittsburgh, there's nowhere else in the state that does that. We also need to remove the stigma. I'm very happy that many uh, high schools now have career development. Some, some have great career development, some not so much. Uh, so they need to appreciate that. And again, you know, there, there's a certain type of student that, boy, they, they really get inspired by engaged in, in that level of work. And uh, there's trem tremendous opportunities there. The issue of what we call the, the skills gap crisis was one of the biggest issues facing manufacturing employers of all sectors before the pandemic. And it still continues. Half of manufacturers, even today, in light of the, the economic recovery challenges that we're facing, still are facing challenges of attracting the skilled talent that they need to fill jobs that currently exist. Biggest area of focus is the perception of the opportunities that exist. And that's something that the NAM has, has launched, our Creators Wanted initiative, to be able to reach out to that next generation of the manufacturing workforce, not just students, but the parents and teachers that are vital in shaping those career decisions to get, get them attracted to understand what's possible. You know, the days of dirty, dark, and dangerous manufacturing are over. When, manufacturing, when students have the ability to go into a manufacturing facility and see what's possible um, and what's needed for not just today, but tomorrow's modern manufacturing economy, that's, that's one of the biggest areas of focus that span uh, a partisan divide and require not just leadership from policymakers, but really a responsibility that manufacturers have to take on to commit themselves, to highlight themselves and what the career potentials are out there for, for that next generation. You know, Cabot knows this all too well with building the, the, the petroleum and natural gas school at Lackawanna. It's a lot of times not just going out to the kids, but it's going out to the parents so that they see the stigma's been removed, the cost benefit versus the expenses there. And I'll, I'll just kind of leave it with this. Those jobs that we're talking about, whether it's plumbing, heating, CDL, manufacturing, they can't be outsourced. You have a job for life in one of those very good paying jobs. So I would encourage you know, everybody, whether it's students, children, grandchildren, to at least look at all of those options about what this country is offering us to be better. America's best days by far, particularly our manufacturing, are ahead of us. We got the whole world, we got the best products, the best innovation, the best creativity, we got the best food. Um, and, and the world could be our stage if we continue to open up, uh, open up these markets.